Affinity Publisher allows you to link text frames together, flowing content seamlessly from one text frame to another. In this first example, I'm going to prepare a number of text frames for additional content. I have here a basic text frame, and we can see that it's been split into three columns. The frame also contains some basic filler text. I'll select the frame, and we can see here that a small blue triangle icon will appear on the right hand side. Selecting the triangle allows you to create new text frames that are linked directly to the original frame. So I'll select the triangle, scroll down to the page below, toggle off my preview mode, and begin click dragging to create the new text frame. We can repeat the process again by simply selecting the blue triangle from our new frame and creating another frame. Each time we create a new text frame using this method, the frame will use the same formatting as the previous frame. We can see here that the new frame has been split into three columns. For this page, I want the frame to be set to a single column. To make this adjustment, I'll open the text frame panel by clicking here on the context toolbar. I'll go down to the column section and reduce the number of columns to one. I can also change the number of columns by selecting the text frame and reducing or increasing the number of columns on the context toolbar here. I'll go ahead and draw out another frame. And we can see that the column adjustment has carried across onto the new frame. Now my text frames have been prepared, I can go ahead and insert my text. I'll locate my text, copy the text by pressing Command C on Mac or Control C on Windows, going back to my document, locating my first text box, and pasting in my new text by pressing Command V on Mac or Control V on Windows. And we can see here that the text has automatically flowed through each of the linked text frames that we prepared earlier. An alternative method is to import the text before drawing out any additional frames. So we would have overflowing text in the first text frame, which can then be flowed to new text frames as they are created. I'll go down to this page here and select this text box. We can see the blue triangle has been replaced with a red triangle. This indicates that the frame contains text that continues beyond the frame's boundaries. By default, this text is hidden, but could be made visible by clicking on the I symbol. If I select the red triangle, I can once again click drag out a new text frame. The overflowing text from the original frame will automatically flow into the new text box that we have created. I can repeat this process a number of times until my text no longer exceeds the bounds of my text frame. We can see that the last frame has reverted back to the blue triangle. Next, we'll make some adjustments to the formatting, and I'm going to go ahead and insert some breaks. We'll go to Text, Insert, Breaks, and insert a column break. We'll repeat a similar process, inserting my cursor here, going to Text, Insert, Breaks, and Frame Break. Much better, my text has now been spaced out nicely. If I select a text frame that contains linked text, we can see that we have a text flow indicator. This arrow indicates the text flow direction. I can toggle the text flow indicator on or off by going to View and selecting Show Text Flow. And that's how to flow text and overflowing text through text frames. We can continue, however, to make some adjustments to our text frames without interrupting the text flow. For example, I can resize this last frame. Alternatively, if I want to edit the text flow, I could remove this frame from the sequence. And I can do this by selecting the frame, clicking the blue triangle, and then clicking once again to detach the frame. Detaching the frame won't delete the content. Instead, the content will remain in sequence. In this example, the previous frame now contains the detached frame's content.
So instead of simply detaching the frame, we could go back by using Command Z on Mac or Control Z on Windows. I could select the text, cut the text by using Command X on Mac or Control X on Windows. Then I could detach the frame, paste my text back into the detached frame using Command V on Mac or Control V on Windows. This will ensure that no matter what change is made to the sequence, my last text box will remain unaffected. I could choose to delete a text frame from the sequence of linked frames. In doing so, we don't lose any of the content from the frame. Instead, the text will automatically flow to the next frame in the sequence. If I scroll down to my next page, we can see that this frame has two small red circles displayed either side of the frame. This indicates that there is overflowing text in these frames. This is useful as it means you don't have to have specific frames selected to see if they contain overflowing text. Finally, I want to show you a feature called Text Autoflow. Text Autoflow allows you to generate new pages and text frames automatically. The feature is incredibly useful for importing large amounts of text. Using this feature, we can even import entire books. I have here a single page A4 document, and on this page, I'm going to insert a new text frame. I'm going to go ahead and place a docx document into the text frame by going to File, Place, selecting my file, and choosing Open. We can see that my text frame has been filled with text from the docx document. And unsurprisingly, we can see that it now contains overflowing text. If I click on the small red triangle, I could then draw out another text frame as we did with the previous example. However, if I instead hold shift and then click the icon, it will automatically create new pages and text frames. In this case, it will populate the entire book, which is about 52 pages. And that's how to flow text through text frames in Affinity Publisher. Thank you for watching.